Praise God! What does it mean to pray with the Lord? Welcome to Bible on the Go with Dr. Dan. You know, the Lord's Prayer is that very famous uh, scripture that took place in the Gospels when the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Lord, will you teach us to pray as John taught his disciples how to pray? And he said, after this manner, therefore pray you. And I'm reading from the King James today. I want to focus on this prayer. Some people say it shouldn't be called the Lord's Prayer because it's really the prayer of the disciples. Fair enough, because Jesus told the disciples to pray this way. And so I found a nice little way of talking through this, referring to it as praying with the Lord. Because when we're in the Spirit, we're praying and we're calling on His name. And Jesus said, pray this way. And the first thing I notice is right here in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, when he says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven. Praying with the Lord means recognizing his nature. We're not praying to a deity or a God that doesn't exist. We're praying to a living God. We're praying to a God that we have a relationship with. He's our Father in heaven. And we're recognizing his nature, who he is. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. He's holy. There's not a, a speck of sin in the nature of God. He's completely holy. 100% of the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, he's never done anything wrong. Praying with the Lord means recognizing his nature. And then in verse 10, praying with the Lord is a focus on his purpose. There's another place in the scripture where it says that God's purposes are higher than our purposes. And Jesus was instructing his disciples here in verse 10 to say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wow. Think of that concept that in the same way right now in heaven where the throne of God is, the will of God is being done instantaneously at once, perpetually, all the time. And what Jesus is asking us to do is to pray that his will would be done down here on this earth with the same instance, with the same immediacy, with the same perpetuity. May your will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. It's a focus on his great purpose. And then I notice when I get down to verse 11, where the requests come in, praying with the Lord brings an assurance for believers. What kind of assurance do we need? Well, we need the assurance of knowing that he provides our daily bread. And we also need the assurance of knowing that he forgives us all our debts. And then he tells us, in what kind of attitude to carry that assurance. It says it right here in verses 11 and 12. And, you know, there's been great hymns sung about this passage and music and grand musical productions done about it. But it's real simple in verse 11 and 12. Give us this day our daily bread. That's an assurance that I have that he's going to meet all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Like Paul said... And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's right. We have a responsibility to maintain this assurance and this sense of all is well. We have an attitude of forgiveness when people offend us and do us wrong. That's a higher Christian ethic, isn't it? Like Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 6. And so in the, in the actual Sermon on the Mount, well, 
Praying with the Lord means recognizing his nature in verse 9, and it's a focus on his purpose in verse 10, and it brings assurance for believers in verse 11 and 12, and then we get to verse 13. Praying with the Lord involves success in combat. Combat? Where does this combat come in, Dr. Dan? Well, there's a devil out there, and Jesus tells us clearly that we can pray, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Wow, it's such an important concept. It's like that time we talked about God's never and God's always. James says, let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed, and when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Right? And James is real clear about this. So what's happening in this combat with the evil one is we're reminded that God never tempts us. But what does he always do? He always delivers from evil. What a promise. What a hope. What a blessing. And then finally, there's a reason I rolled out this King James Bible, because I wanted to read this passage. It says, For thine, in the second part of verse 13, For thine, is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and forever. Praying with the Lord is an opportunity for perpetual worship. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Thanks for watching Bible on the Go with Dr. Dan. Hey, if you like these videos, the best thing you can do is to hit that red button called subscribe. You only have to do it once, and it's absolutely free. And I also want to mention, if you'll go to my website, BibleOnTheGo.org, you will find a daily devotional there called Praise God. And when you click on it, it'll be a link to the day's devotion, and every one of those scriptures is hyperlinked. Praise God!